with Vermont Friday. Today's guest, the most handsome man in Portland, or is it the most handsome man in Oregon? Oh, don't give it away. That is my one party <laughs> trick when people ask me what I do for a living and I try to explain SEO to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, let's, yeah. Uh, I, I started as the most handsome in Portland and now I've graduated to Oregon. I'm hoping to take over the West Coast at some point, but let me tell you, California, California ain't as nice as those vanity search results. Oh, yeah, they got those locked down. The Pacific Northwest, though, maybe, instead of the West Coast. Exactly. That, could be the, that could be the next I'll, episode. I'll try to go further and further. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, excited to be here today. If it's Friday, it's Vermont Friday. Let's do it. <laughs> so today, I want to talk about a few things, but we have been, I think two of my favorite recent examples of this is I posted our product release last week and i had someone respond with it's amazing to see you guys go from being a one out of ten at explaining what you do to being something better than that dot 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 so uh hey we're we're on the road towards it we're getting better at it we have an understandability problem i've got aaron on here today because we want to talk about what is vermont and just kind of like share with you how we're thinking about this how we're dissecting it and just I don't know, shoot the shit over what is Vermont. <laughs> well, you just said shoot the shit. So I wasn't sure if we could actually title this episode by, by its proper name, which is <laughs> WTF Vermont. I'll try to keep it safe for work for the kiddos because I know, yeah, I know we've got fans under the age of 18 who just <laughs> want to know what Vermont is. And we did learn that if Aaron drops too much profanity on LinkedIn, his posts will get banned. So uh, we got that working against us too. <laughs> oh my goodness. All of the goofy <laughs> backstories, things, so much insider stuff. Let's, let's, let's get cooking. All right. Aaron, I'm going to ask a very pointed question. What is Vermont? We've been thinking about this for a while. Where are we at? Vermont. Vermont lets you create funnels the same way you create ads. That is it in a five second or less nutshell single line. Now there's plenty more we can unpack with that, but that, that after much weeping, gnashing of teeth, whiteboard time, me coming in and being probably the most valuable I'm ever going to be to Vermont, those first initial two, three, four weeks when I come in with the eyes of an outsider and I still feel the empathy of those outsiders who look at us and go, yeah, neat. What do you do? Right? The same way you create ads, Vermont lets you create funnels. Create funnels the same way you create ads. Now, now, let's 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 pause there. You you come at me. Uh, talk, t talk to me about that definition of Vermont. So, one of the reasons I like, like, like you were saying, coming in with a fresh set of eyes, I think it's, it's always hard. The more you start to understand about what Vermont can do, there's like all these things we can do. And then the explanation, everyone always tries to like wrap all these things into one and you lose the ability to be like very pointed like that. And I love create fun, like create funnels, like you create your ads because it allows people to think of us in a way that they're already thinking about something. So like, I'm, I'm actually going to push this back to you with like another question is like, what does that, like, if we were to go a layer deeper than that, what does that mean? Like, how are people creating ads right now that we want to play off of with creating funnels? I think before we jump into that, the, I, I do want to emphasize this idea of the most valuable dear listener you are to your company is in those initial days and weeks when you first come in and don't understand something. Your experience with that is 99.9% .9 your customer facing, the folks that come and website, emails, social, et cetera. Everyone is experiencing you, the vast majority for the first time. And there's this tendency, I think, uh, and it doesn't really matter your, your time in the biz, where 
uh, what I see a lot of folks is they bite their tongues because they think they're supposed to understand something. They're not willing to ask questions. That in and of itself is probably like one of the best lessons we could get out from this from Up Friday is as you go into a new organization, do not be afraid to be dumb. Uh, call a spade a spade and take a little bit of a risk to those those golden calves, the, the idols, the things that everybody pledges their allegiance to and feel sacrosanct to you. Don't be a little, don't be afraid to start poking holes at those things um, and really bring to the fore the issues that you run into. Now, luckily, the, the environment that I inherited when I came in here to Vermont, and I'm VP of growth now as of about a month ago, uh, actually less than that. I inherited this acute awareness that people don't understand what we do. And I think that speaks to the leadership that really attracted me to Vermont uh, just to begin with, but this openness to we could be wrong. We don't have all of the answers. So I want to push push our, our listeners to take that, be that most valuable thing you can be in, in those initial moments. The other thing I think you tied into really well is you said it's, how did you put it? You're like, if Vermont lets you create funnels the same way you create ads, right? That's a metaphor. Metaphors are the gold standard unlock for clear, powerful communication, especially when you're introducing something unknown, to dress it up in the clothes of something that is known. So if it's a category creation, if it's a new idea, like I always go back, it's super cliche, but it's so good, right? When, when Apple was on its way to becoming the second or third, maybe even the first, the most valuable company in the world. The way they did that is they got to the music first, right? Yep. They got to the music first and Steve Jobs stood up and he held up the iPod that nobody knew what an iPod was. Nobody really knew what an MP3 was or, you know, like there's maybe a Napster was out in the ether of the social, right? So you had all of these things where you could talk about the technical specifications and, and, and how does this compress music? And there's all these like ways. And he said, no, 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 no. You know what this is? This little thing I'm holding right here, this is a thousand songs in your pocket. This thing you don't know is like this thing that you do know in a new way. I know back in the day, the relative size of a thousand songs. I know the size of my pocket and I know never before have the two met in human history, right? So it's being willing to say this is like that and pushing hard into those metaphors for the this the second big lesson is find metaphors that attach the unknown to the known this is like that and then you can begin with that shared language to 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 explain it a, a metaphor or like a no taking something that's unknown attaching it to something that's known like i i like to call it anchor points is basically like okay i can anchor to something and then i can go from there and Again, one of the reasons I like this create funnels like you create ads is Vermont's kind of like default anchor point for, I'm going to say a very long time, but like I haven't been here for a crazy long time either. But as long as I've been here has been, the anchor point has been a landing page. Like tell me how you're different than a landing page. And the reason I love going like this is because it's telling people, we're anchoring to something people still know, but we're not like going so specific into the landing page. It's like, Tell me how you're different than this. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. This You've been here longer than me, and I can tell by even your optimism that people are comparing us to landing pages. <laughs> even that's optimistic compared to the response I got coming in to Vermont. Which and is, especially, I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> what the hell is a personalized one-to-one -one post click shopping experience? That was like, whoa, no. It's the, hmm? Right. So e even getting it close to something like Glandy Page is actually a step in the right direction. Um, and I think there was like fear, especially when you're create like a category creation. Right. That that's the name of the game that Vermont is after is it actually is something new and different. It's a third way between your ad platform, your e-commerce site and how do you connect the two together? It's not just a landing page. It's not just an in-platform shopping experience like a IG post or a Facebook store, right? It's, it's not these things. It is a new third way, right? Now, when it comes then to like landing pages, yeah, it, it's a good start because then it at least gets you to something like, okay, I have a category for understanding uh, when I'm operating. Go ahead. Look like you have something. Yeah, Go no, on. it's just great because like it, 
the landing page, at least like I have, oh, landing page builders look like this. I interact with them like this. Like I can start mm -hmm. to understand how that tool and I interface with one another where what you were saying before, personalize, one-to-one, -one, shop it. Like, okay, how do I interface with that? What, like, yeah. what is it? Yeah, yeah. And landing page starts getting you closer too to the idea that people intuitively understand that a landing page is meant to unite those two points that, that I just said out loud. The ad platform, the ad unit, how you attract people and how you convert people, how you acquire new customers at the checkout level. So people understand that at an ad level, you really have three things going on that connects it to the landing page that's more narrow. At the ad level, you've got your, your offer, your creative, and your audience. And these sort of like three, these three triangulate in, into each other. The offer is simply, what are you selling and for what price? What am I getting if I give you my money and how much money do I have to give you to get it? That's the offer. So the offer can be a discount. It can be tied to a seasonal event. It can be, be buy to get one. It can be gift with purchase. It can be subscribe and save, right? It's the, what are you selling me and how much does it cost? The audience is who is it for? And, and ad buyers start to understand this of like, okay, the offer, you can have a core acquisition offer, but the way you frame that, the value propositions you put forward, the social proof that you use, the images that you use are all gonna be different at the ad level for the audience that you're trying to attract. And then that informs then the creative that you're making to run it. Whether you're like, is it the ad type? Is it the form of the ad as, as like explainer video, short form video? Is it a mashup? Is it a GIF, right? There's all these different sort of things you could do at the, the creative level, but those are the three basic components. And a landing page then is trying to match those three with the way that it then communicates to your audience as well, right? What I wanted to do was back up one step from that idea of landing pages alone, because as I got into Vermont, what I what I'm finding is it's far more it's far more helpful to think about funnels than it is just to think about landing pages. And I think this is for for at least two reasons. So we're agreed on what the component parts of an ad is offer audience creative. And then we start moving into, OK, so what is a funnel? Right. Um, and a funnel is basically your landing page, your PDP, your cart. The culmination of the funnel is the checkout, give me your money. But if you have your ad on the front end and then this funnel layer in between, where we go from the lander to the PDP to the custom cart, right? Especially in this post iOS 14, soon to be cookie-less world, multiple devices, struggling with identity resolution, the nightmare that is tracking and then giving somebody a continuation of their experience. What has to happen is the click, the intention at the ad level has to compress the funnel so that it matches as closely as you possibly can, reduces friction throughout, or at least creates the smoothest, fastest path to purchase at that offer, audience, and creative level to match the landing page, PDP, custom cart, right? So, so, so far, we've, now we've already gone like way, way larger than the original definition, right? But, but you, you tell me. For sure, but like when we say create funnels like you create ads, we're essentially saying you would create an ad with an offer, the creative, and the audience in mind. So if you're going to build the full funnel, you need to have the same things in mind. I need to be able to pull that offer all the way through the funnel. I need the creative to match up all the way through the funnel. And I want my audience to be the same. Now you said, hey, in a cookie-less world, like, like identifying someone, ideally we would always love to be one-to-one, -one, right? Like this is Aaron. I know everything about Aaron. I have cookied him. He is now on my site. Let me serve up the most personalized experience possible. That's utopia. That's also like pretty hard and maybe a little far away for like people to get to. But what we were saying with the landing page side of this is like, hey, I've done all this on the creative side. Now I'm dropping them in is yeah, with a custom landing page, I'm now not one to all. I'm one to many. And then on the other side with like personalized, like when in a cookie world, like one to one probably isn't a thing. But what if you could be one to few? And the few all have this commonality on what they want and what they're after and what they look like. And because I know what ad drove them there, I can build an experience around it. Yeah. And, and, and I come 
from the agency D2C world. So I came up through Shopify. That was my original claim to fame. Led written content at Shopify Plus right when Shopify Plus became Shopify Plus. Like, dude, I'm so old school. Talk about dressing things up in clothes and metaphors. I remember literally writing uh, articles and guides on why you should trust the cloud and defining what a SaaS is. That's <laughs> how old school I am in e -com. How long I've been trying to crack the code of like metaphors, on-premise software. Anyway, so... Uh, and then I came up through a beautiful group of human beings, Common Thread Collective, probably like the freaking brains of brains. Um, and when it comes to efficiency, profitable growth, like that was my PhD level education where I got to be VP of marketing there at Common Thread Collective. And the way you create ads is heavily influenced by like how I think about the, there's so much freighted in this, the same way you create ads Vermont lets you create funnels. So there's the ads we've defined. What is that same way though? Right. The same way is any good media buyer doesn't know what creative, what ad is going to win and work, especially when you're trying to unlock new offers and especially when you're trying to unlock new audiences. You yeah. don't know what that creative is going. Yeah, so you, maybe you've got a framework of we're going to try UGC with, we're going to match the individual that we're now trying to go after. Um, we've got review, like there's different types you can use and you can create different hooks to try to figure out. But the key to that same way is you have to have volume. You have to have volume of creative output. You have to fill the account with, and then let Facebook do that magical thing that Facebook does when it's working correctly. And nine times out of 10, it absolutely is. There's always outliers, but it is the greatest demand realization platform that's ever been creative. When the creative matches the offer in the audience that you're going after, but you have to have volume, speed. You have to crank on that ad creative and then let Facebook sort out the winners and allocate spend accordingly. All right. So you need volume that same way. You also need experimentation. And that goes into the idea of to run a, a, enough volume that then lets you unlock the experimentation angle. Right. But it's the speed that enables and plays back and forth between the two. And then the third ingredient is targeting because it's going to if the if the creative matches the audience and the offer hits, then you've you've gone broad with your offer and creative, and then Facebook meta zeroes in on the targeting. So that's what I mean by the same way. And the real struggle right there is when it comes to the volume. And this is that differentiator, right? This is the, I think the fundamental differentiator is that you simply could not do that with your funnel prior to Vermont. And like the experiment, like when you were saying the experimentation side of this too, is like, Hey, on like you build ads is so important because like you build ads, I think one of the best parts about experimenting and building at the ad level is it is so much simpler and cheaper than doing anything on site, right? So like if we think about the funnel from being ad all the way to checkout, it's like, why do we experiment so much here? I mean, like Facebook is one of the best demand generation tools ever created. And like, there's a lot of great, there's a lot of great tools in here that are self self optimizing it but like even before that you still have a ton of experimentation levers at play here let me change what the hook is let me change what the middle of this is going to be let me change what that final cta is going to be i have so much freedom to play with this that most e-com operators have come to the conclusion that my site will never give me i will never be able to experiment and play around and have this playground on site like I do at the ad level. So let me mess around with as much as I can there. I think that's where Vermont comes in is we're essentially saying like that playground you have at the ad level, you can have that same thing for the mid funnel. Trust us. And it's that the gulf, the yawning chasm that the site creates. And that exists for at least two reasons. One is a developmental design resource constraint. Maybe you've got a really robust landing page builder and, and you're gonna craft the copy on it and test a couple of headlines, but you're really locked into, it's a lot of effort to at best, at best two, maybe three a month. And then you really nail a template and you can kind of tweak that template. But you know, you're, you're, you imagine if somebody told you like, you get to launch, 
two to possibly three new ads every month. Like that is that is death <laughs> in an e-commerce. No ad one account, would accept. No one right? would accept that. <laughs> And so what like the media buyer, the growth market, the performance marketer knows that they can do is you give me a Canva account and I'm going to crank maybe some cap cut in there. And maybe I'll get fancy every once in a while with After Effects and like we'll do a whole like video shoot, that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, perhaps from time to time. But really, it's just like, let me crank and get scrappy AF. And because I don't know what's going to win. I've got hypotheses. I've got template. I've got best practices that I know that work for these sort of. But I, what I have to do is create that volume. I've got to create that volume. And so I can do that in the ad account. I can't do that on the site. The first is that resource constraint. That's yep. one of the reasons you just can't. The other one, the other one is the political red tape side of things. When you go to change anything on the site, and I've seen this more and more uh, with larger organizations, is you, you have damn near, and in some cases, literally like executive Board-ish level approval to alter the site in any way. Because it is, the, and there's so many cooks in the kitchen there. And this is where Vermont, by putting it on a subdomain, lifting it outside of, I, I do actually really like the way Rava talks about the physics, um, the gravity, right? You've got your CSS, you've got all the, the classes and the way the H's and the body copy works and your image sizing and your color scheme. And you've got all these, like, it's templatized, it's inside your theme. Um, you, you, all of that is bound up in, in your store, in the back end of it with the front end rendering. So by lifting it up out of that and saying, we can replicate what you want, we can change what you want. And we can do it at that same volume and speed as you're used to doing it in the ad account. That's that whole idea of the same way, that it's freeing it. It's giving, especially the growth marketers, the heads of growth, the paid media folks, the media buyers, the ability to do with the funnel right up to the edge of checkout where they give you their money, exactly the way that you're used to optimizing and cranking in the ad account itself to drive growth. Uh, one term that I use a lot when explaining like what this is going to allow is own the outcome. You have so many people on the growth marketing side, the media buyer side that are like really cranking on these ads, but then sometimes it feels like you can just be kind of like throwing it over the fence. Like, Oh, I did everything I could. Like now it's on, now it's on the site to do what it needs to do. And like that, that's always, I don't know, rub me the wrong way. Like, why can't you just own the outcome all the way through? Why can't I create the ad and then create the landing page and then create the merchandising and create the offer that's going to be going through here? Oh, and I love the way you just, you brought up that word merchandising. Cause that's then, so, cause we're expanding it from just a landing page builder to yes, landing page, right? Video landing page, advertorial, explainer landing pages, you know, all of the basic templates that you would think about. These are the types. Um, and yeah, we should actually uh, definitely link to the landing page guy that I put together uh, right on my way in to uh, Vermont as well, because that gives we've got 10 templates in there of Check exactly the show how to use them. Be in there. Right. <laughs> there's there's always different ways you can. But then the the next gulf becomes that the the PDP. Because then even if you're able to create that landing page experience that matches the ad experience, then you're beholden to, I, I, I got to send them to, all right, now the merchandising on it, the reviews don't necessarily match, the value propositions don't necessarily match because you're back to that one to all, or duping your Shopify products and hiding some of them, excluding them from collections. Maybe you're getting a little more savvy and you can do that sort of thing, but even that's a pretty big lift. And then there's all that merchandising it, even merchandising it into the cart level with matching upsells, complete the look, whether that's fashion and beauty. Uh, what are we optimizing for at the PDP and cart level? Is it first time subscriptions? Is it AOV, right? There's, there's all these things like where you're the same way you're doing that in the ad account. You want to be able to do that with the experience to get somebody to give you their money. And now guess what? Right? I'm such a shell. <laughs> that that's the whole that's the idea. And yeah, again, you can, like when you were talking about hey, the things that stop people from doing this, like yeah, there's the site complexities, there's the red tape of this. Like I'll add two more things into this is Shopify especially is very much built on an app ecosystem. So like not only am I dealing with like Shopify specific themes, Shopify specific templates, if I want to merchandise something a certain way and now it's showing the PDP on my site what are all the apps that I have running on this? If I want to, if I want to bring this full funnel from ad all the way through, now I need to be concerned. 
Have I turned this app off? Have I turned this app on? Have I done the adjustments inside of this app? Because like someone the other day said to me like, oh, everything that you're doing, I can do. And I'm like, yeah, you probably could if you put a ton of effort into it to make sure you're creating that consistent experience all the way through the funnel. But that's more work than it's worth. Don't do that. Use something like yeah. Vermont. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. And, uh, and the, the reason I know, I love people saying, I could do all of this. And I'm like, yeah. And so the easy answer is, why aren't you? And that, that's when you hit the, like, what are the actual blockers, right? Of yeah. course you can. Why aren't you? And if you're not doing it now, is your future state going to be different than your current state? Do you expect to suddenly be resourced, you know? To, to, of course not. Nope. Tomorrow is going to be very much like today. Did anything change today? No. What makes you think tomorrow is going to change? Right. This is the so we need to inject something new into the system in order for it to change. I mean, this is true for human beings, how we change as individuals in our lives and our relationships. It's also true for business. And the reason I know this is true is because every year when I was a common thread collective, we used to do this giant hundreds of sites. Uh, during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and we would go, we'd screenshot mobile, screenshot desktop. We would, what's the offer? What's the banner? And do like 30% forgot to turn off their evergreen pop-up. These are leading brands, the top brands in the D2C ecosystem. And they're leaving, like, it's just so removing that level of what I don't have to look out for. You, you talk about apps and yes, there's all these like, Fancy things do people even forget to update their pop-ups for Black Friday, right? So yeah, don't you're gonna make the mistakes, and and that's the most basic one, right? Like think about all of like the in cart customizations that you have with an app. I want this particular upsell. I want this particular cross sell. Like there, like people are missing the basics. What about like all these unique things that you have set up on the site? And again, like we, we say a lot here that the site has to be average. And a lot of those upsells, a lot of these offers, a lot of these experiences that you're creating are just taking kind of like the easiest route possible. These are my top three performing products. If someone buys top performing product number one, then offer number two and number three. If they bought number two, then offer number one and number three, which is great. Again, when I don't know where someone's coming from and I kind of have to be average, but if I know what they saw and they clicked on the ad, I know what they were into. I know what they were seeing. Let me build something up specific to that. They saw this ad that was a get ready with me that featured these four products. Maybe those aren't my top performing products, but hey, it's gonna, I'm going to have a lot easier time cross-selling someone into those products that were featured in the ad than I am into my top performers. And whether it's UGC or – so one of the things that I do also that makes me valuable when I come into an organization is I I get to – my own ignorance gets to be slammed up against whatever the current external-facing marketing is, right? And so I'm, I'm able to – and everybody's able to do this, right? When you're ignorant, you're incredibly valuable because you're going you're gonna to understand and spot the things that other people don't understand. Um, and about a week from now, I'm going to be worth a lot less to <laughs> Vermont. Hopefully, they don't cut my pay down. But – I was talking to a, it was, it was a nine figure beauty brand, uh, like good meaty mid nine figures. And what, uh, what this, uh, VP of digital was saying is our fundamental problem is usage rights with the large influencers we work with, because we have limited time windows in which we can use that. And it has nothing to do necessarily with seasonality. It's just what they're paying for and how the agreements are structured. So they're stuck with, right, the, the influencer may or may not actually follow what are the specific products we wanted you to use. And then we've got to try to cobble together a landing, typically PDP experience, and possibly uh, a bundle or an upsell that, that tries to get to exactly what you're talking about. What's the most likely next purchase? And this was like a revelation to them. They're like, wait, 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 I can spin up five of these on a Monday, use that ad. Test that ad against a video landing with them in that ad. I can also test that against, say, like my reasons why, and then like seed in their content into that reasons why. Like, so I, I can I can basically adapt whatever my best performing current landing page experience is with their content, whip them out on a Monday morning, and then turn them off, right, a Friday later, and we can do that consistently. That's that's the thing of yeah. If you can do that with an ad, you can do that with your funnel, of course. 
and that like that brings it full circle, right? Like when we're saying what is Vermont, and again, like you and I would both say, hey, we don't have this completely nailed down yet, but we want to give everyone like the ability to kind of come on the journey with us. Yeah. Creating funnels like you create your ads is that right? Like we just went on for 20 minutes talking about like why people experiment with ads. Why do people build ads the way they do? Getting to volume, experimenting, figuring out what's working. That just hasn't existed mid funnel. And again, I'll explain the funnel again, like at the, the highest part of the funnel, we have the ad that's going to drive it there. You've got your landing experience or your landing page. You've got the product that someone is going to click on and add to their cart. You've got the cart experience itself. And then we have the checkout. Everyone has figured out that I can experiment and play with, and I have full control over ads. There's no red tape that exists in ads. I can try as many of these as I want. What people haven't figured out is that you can actually do that same thing in the mid funnel, the landing page, the products, and the cart. And that's what Vermont is giving you. The ability to change, manipulate, experiment, test, build inside of this mid funnel like you would at the top of the funnel. It exists. People, the problem is people just don't know it does because I've always been limited to dropping someone on the site and that's not the case anymore. They don't know, but we're spreading the good news. Spreading the gospel. <laughs> I wasn't going to go that far, but all right, let's get sacrilegious. <laughs> hey, it's Friday, people. Let's get loose. All right, Aaron, this has been fantastic. You mentioned the landing page post. Anything else that we should be pointing people towards? Where should they be following you? We'll get all of this into the show notes for the people. Yo, yo, teaser. Uh, go track me down on Twitter. Uh, X, I'm at Aaron Orndorff. There's just one of me rolling around out there. I'm Aaron Orndorff on LinkedIn as well. And I'm about to, if you have not experienced that landing page guide, it's, it's, here it is. This is the best, this is. This is absolutely the best resource on landing page. It's got a database hosted inside of Notion of over a hundred different landing pages from the top brands, desktop and mobile. It's categorized. We've got Figma templates that you can download and use desktop and mobile. And I'm gonna follow it up uh, in about a week with uh, an equally glorious and beastly post on, guess what? E-commerce funnels. It's it's coming soon. So follow me, I'll be teasing it and be the first to know when it drops. It's bananas amazing we will get the landing page guide into the show notes so everyone can grab it if this does launch before this episode comes out we'll have the funnel guide in there as well be sure to check these both out it like aaron is even selling it short it is a ton of value so many examples in there everyone should be grabbing it thank you sir all right thanks aaron